All right. Today, we're fortunate enough to have three great entrepreneurs with us to share their experiences with you. Our panel features owners who are at various stages of their business careers, from startup to established to seasoned. As they share a bit about them, I would welcome them to make their way to the stage. Our newest entrepreneur of the group is Dave Villhauer with South Dakota Sports Scene. Dave is in his 43rd year as a member of the media. He worked at the Aberdeen American News for nearly 36 years where he began writing game stories for the paper as a junior in high school. He joined the Hub City Radio in 2016 and served as the News and Sports Information Director. In 2021, he created a sports website called South Dakota Sports Scene, which covers more than 30 high schools, Northern State University, Presentation College, Aberdeen Wings, Aberdeen Cougars, Aberdeen Smitties, Aberdeen Swim Club, and Game Stories, feature articles, and complete box scores. Dave has won numerous awards over his career and has conducted exclusive one-on-one -on -one interviews with numerous national sports figures, including Michael Jordan, Richard Petty, Kirby Puckett, Bill Self, and John Wooden. Next is Brianna Kusler of Kusler Clinics. Brianna is an Aberdeen native, graduating from Aberdeen Central High School and Northern State University, a multiple sport athlete in high school, and she played volleyball, basketball, and ran track, receiving many honors. Following her prep career, she played four years of basketball for the NSU Wolves and played in Brazil for Team USA D2 team. Brianna was fortunate enough to have played for an, for an outstanding coaches, which sparked her passion for giving back to the athletics that gave her so much. After her freshman year of college, Brianna began Kusler Clinics, desiring to provide athletes with a unique opportunity to reach their potential. Kusler Clinics has evolved to provide sports development training across the central and south central parts of South Dakota in volleyball, basketball, and football for grades pre-K through 12th grade. The Kusler Clinics team is committed to building better athletes and building better people. This past club volleyball season, Brianna coached two teams to a top five finish at the AAU National Championships, with her U-17 team finishing runner-up and her 16U team finishing in fifth place. Brianna operates her business while also serving as the head basketball coach for the Peer Governors. And finally, our most seasoned business owner is Cam Schock, who is the president and co-owner of Climate Control Incorporated, along with his wife, Amy, here in Aberdeen. He was exposed to the contracting industry while still in high school by his father, who owned a plumbing and heating business. He attended the University of Wyoming for two years, studying mechanical engineering, and then entered the workforce to start his career. Cam has worked in the HVAC industry continuously, doing everything from system installation, wholesale sales, and design work for an engineering firm. Climate Control began in 2000 to accomplish a dream of being a business owner starting from scratch. It has grown into a team of 18 people that are driven to provide a premier home service experience for clients in the Aberdeen area. Please help me welcome our panelists. Mic on? I don't really. I was telling people I don't really need a mic because I've got a pretty loud voice, so this, uh, this should work out just fine. I, I feel almost a little intimidated up here with these two guys. I've known them for years. I served on a board with Cam, and uh, you want to talk about a guy that has a sense for business. Uh, unbelievable. And so I'm going to be like everybody else, and I'm going to be taking notes when he speaks because I'm a new business owner, and I've got a lot to learn. So, And Brianna, I've known Brianna for a long time, and you want to talk about a pioneer. She is the first and only ever uh, boys basketball coach uh, at the AA level in South Dakota. And I, uh, I follow a lot of people on social media. I have never met anybody that has the following that she does. So you don't want to make Brianna mad because she's got an army out there, a lot, a lot of supporters. Well, anyway, I started a business about a year and a half ago, actually. And it was a, uh, uh, it was a huge leap of faith for me because uh, I had never been a business owner before. Really don't even kind of consider myself a business owner now, really. I'm a sports writer who happens to own a business, I guess is the way you would put it. And, uh, you know, corporate has come and just gutted uh, local media, and I just felt that there were too many stories that were being missed. And so I thought about, uh, you know, what, what could I do about that? And I, I had a couple people say, hey, have you ever thought about, like, you know, starting a website, writing a blog or two or something like that? And I said, yeah, but I don't think you could make money doing that. 
And they said, um, you might be surprised. And so I, uh, I thought about it, and I prayed about it, and I said, okay, God, if you want me to do this, uh, show me a sign. And he showed me a really, really good sign. And of course, being the great man of faith that I am, I said, okay, God, show me another sign. Uh, and, he, and he kept doing that to the point where, okay, I get it. I, I know I'm supposed to be doing this. So uh, I had no idea what this looked like at all. And so I, uh, I got together with three prominent business people in town. And I said, you know, I can understand, I can envision the content piece of this. I don't understand the revenue stream. I don't understand the business model. What does this look like? And so they, uh, they asked me some very hard questions. And I did my best to answer them. And at the end of every one of those conversations, each individual said, I think this can work. And I said, well, OK, then. And I had the blessing of my wife and family. And they said, go for it. So I gave up steady income for the great unknown. Uh, and you know what? No regrets whatsoever. Uh, we've been at it for a year and a half. We're expanding. We're having a great time. I've interviewed some of the people right here in the front row, actually, within the last month or so. Congratulations to each one of you, by the way. I'll tell you what, you guys are so far ahead of the game compared to where I, I'm just new at this. Look at you guys. Man, that's fantastic. So anyway, we, uh, we started out and uh, hired John Davis, former photographer at the American News. He takes the pictures. And, uh, you know, the, the magic happens right at my di dining room table, if you can believe that. I don't even have, I've never had an office in before in my life. Can you believe that? Here I am towards the end of my career. I've never even had an office. I still don't. So, you know, dining room table, whip out the computer, boom, there we go. And so it, we cover uh, 30, about 30 high school teams. And like we just said, uh, with Northern PC, the wings, all of that sort of stuff. And what I found out is people like it we are supplying content that people can't get anywhere else. So that's part of having a valuable business is you, ha you have to have something that people value or want. Um, now, is it tough to get people's attention in this day and age? It's almost impossible. Our attention spans are so short. How in the world do you get people to understand what you have for your product? How do you advertise? How do you market? How do you do all of those sorts of things? And so I am really learning as we go. Um, but what I found out is, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid what others think. There, there is no such thing as a dumb idea, OK? It's just maybe an idea that didn't work. But how do you know until you try it, right? So you know, one of the frustrating parts of my job is it's so new that there's really no template. If we want to do something, I'm like, well, how have we done it before? Well, we haven't done it before. It's a new business. What do we do? But you know what? Part of the really cool thing about having a business like this is there's no template. Hey, we can do it. No, we've never done it before. Let's try it. Let's see if it works. And you know, we don't have anything else to compare it to. So we give it a try. And again, people have responded in, in just fantastic ways. Um, again, listen to your advisors, to your peers, to others who have been in it. Um, that's why I'm excited to hear these guys speak, because I'm going to be picking up ideas. I'm still learning. I've got so incredibly much to learn as a business owner. And we're trying things. Are they working? Are they not working? Um, and you know, one of the things is you have to have a good business model. And so my business model is part subscription, part sponsorship. So people can subscribe to my website. Uh, it's $60 a year plus tax. Somebody figured out that it's 16 cents a day. I've, I, I'm not good at math. I don't know that. But it's five bucks a month, basically. Okay, um, And so that's one way to be a part of the website. The other part is sponsorships, getting advertisers. Okay, So you go out. How do you get advertisers? Well, for the most part, you go to people and you say, hey, um, would you like to be part of this? And you, you know, rejection is part of this. I mean, you can't, if you're, if you're a person that has their feelings hurt easily, eh, we're probably going to have a tough time with that. I don't have a problem with that because I believe in what we're doing. So when I go to people, I don't beg them for money. I say, here's an opportunity for you. Here's what we're doing. Thought maybe you want, want to be aware of that. Um, I've actually had 10, 12 businesses contact me, say, hey, we heard about your website. What can we do to be a part of it? I heard that's unheard of. 
Um, now, not all of those people have come on board as sponsors, but probably half of them have. And to me, that's a good sign when they're reaching out to me saying, hey, uh, you're, you're onto something there. What, what can we do to help? Um, so in, in a basically a uh, year and a half, we're up to 57 businesses that have jumped on board from about eight different cities, and we're growing. Um, and it's just like, wow! I, I wish I knew what to, I wish I knew what to do next. I don't, I, you know, I don't even have a business partner, you know. So I'm bouncing ideas off my wife, off my friends, off co whatever, you know. Uh, what's next? What should we do next? Well, one of the things that I've learned um, through the years is you never sit still, because if you're not growing, you're going backwards. I mean, that's that's just the way it is. And so we're trying to figure out, okay, what's the next step in this process, okay? And so we try things. We, well, what should we do next? Well, okay, this, we're, we're looking at doing a podcast, adding more features to the website, potentially doing an athlete of the month, things like that. How do you market your business? Well, that's a good question, okay? Um, one of the things that I tried, I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm having fun doing it, is we came up with this handy-dandy window decal, okay? It says SD Sports Scene on it. These are free to whoever wants one. Um, I, I look at it as just getting the word out, okay? If, if, if somebody's at an event and they see this, they're going, SD Sports Scene, what is that? Or I'm hoping they'll say, hey, I know hey, SD Sports Scene is here. That's cool. This must be a pretty big deal. So again, try different things. You never know what's going to work. You never know what's not going to work. But you, don't, you aren't going to know until you try it. So what's going to happen here in the next two, three, four years? That's a really good question. I'm really excited to find out. Um, I think we're going to continue growing. We added six teams this past fall. My goal is to add maybe another half a dozen teams next year. Um, who knows, I might even be able to actually have some people that can, I can hire full time to help me so I don't have to stay up till three in the morning do, doing box scores and all the other things. Um, but you know, somebody said before the fall season started, um, boy, I suppose you're, you're kind of dreading this rat race here coming up with all the sports starting and stuff. And I said, no, I, I kind of like that. Um, I, I chose to do this. Uh, I, I chose to embrace the rat race, okay? I could be doing something else right now. I mean, you could make the argument that I've already had my career. I mean, I spent 36 years at the newspaper. That's a long time. But you know what? The passion is still there to go out and share the stories of you guys, okay? I get more reward from going and interviewing you guys than I do anything else, okay? Some of you have never been interviewed before in your life, maybe never will be again, and to see the look on high school student athletes' face, even small kids, their faces, and they just light up, and the parents get excited, and the grandparents get excited. I had an opportunity to interview two nine-year-olds this past summer, one in swimming and one in soccer. You know how hard it is to interview a nine-year-old and get some usable content from them? That's a challenge. And so I talk to him for five minutes, and I always try and, you know, make it conversational, not intimidating, anything like that. I'm, I will never, ever, ever make anybody sound stupid, ever, okay? If they say something stupid, I'm not using it, okay? I've said enough stupid things in my life. I don't, you know, I know what that's like. I still remember interviewing those nine-year-olds, and I'm typing up the story, and I say to my wife, whew, uh, boy, this is going to be a challenge to get something out of this. And so I come up with one or two complete sentences that they, you know, that they said that makes it you know, coherent or whatever. The next thing you know, the parents read it, and they think it's Shakespeare. Oh, my goodness, you sound so growing up. Oh, it's unbelievable. Blah, 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 you know? And I'm like, okay, I guess everybody's happy. You know? So, I mean, th there it is. There's, there's the void that we're filling. We're turning the spotlight back on student-athletes and we're recording what they're doing and, and their accomplishments. Because if we're not doing it, who's going to do it? You know? There's a lot of events that I show up to, and I'm looking, and I'm going, no media here. Hmm. If I'm not there documenting that and recording that, does, it's like, did it even happen? You know? So we're filling a void. And, you know, I just, I, I'm so grateful for all the people that have come on board and supported us from day one. And I really can't wait to see where the future takes us because I think it's very, very bright.
I probably used up my 10 minutes. Okay, thank you very much. All right, I am Brian Wiesler. I'm the owner of Priestley Clinics, and like they mentioned, I'm the head boys basketball coach in Pierre, South Dakota. Uh, it is truly an honor to share the stage with, with both of these guys here. Um, I've known both of them for many, many years. Uh, Everything comes full circle here. Cam, uh, my, my dad used to work for climate control years ago. Um, and then Dave, we've grown up, or I, I grew up with them in church and, um, and then just through the sports scene through the years. Uh, before, before I get into my stuff, I'd rather talk about these guys. You don't want to listen to me. But, um, you, you know, he, he's spot on with, he'll never um, make anybody sound silly. Uh, and that is something that, that, that carries a lot of weight. And uh, for me, as a person who, who does get interviewed um, uh, quite frequently as far as uh, media outlets, across the state, there's a lot of times where I have to be very strategic with uh, what I'm saying and concerned about how they may manipulate my words to sound complete opposite of what I, what I had in mind. So um, there's a lot that, that goes through, whereas whenever I've been interviewed by Dave, it is simply a conversation. And, th and that speaks volumes to just how um, talented he is and, and the impact that he's had on, on the sports scene. Uh, naturally, I'm a, I'm a sports fan, and I, I always have been. I always will be. Uh, sports have been an integral part of my life for, for all 25 of my years, and they will continue to be um, for the foreseeable future. But truly um, honored to be, to be sharing the stage. And then also congratulations to all of you finalists as well. Hearing your guys' pitches, oh my goodness, I'm sitting there like, geez, these guys are way smarter than me, I have, than I ever was. So you guys are leaps and bounds ahead. Um, and awesome, what, a, what an incredible event here for, for them to be able to share these ideas and um, really jump-starting you guys into, into an opportunity with if you choose to go um, into your entrepreneurship. Uh, so I, I would really encourage you all to um, take the next steps and see where that business can go because that kind of jump-starts me into where my business is. And, and truly, my business started when I was 19 years old. It was the summer between my freshman and sophomore year of college. And really, it started as a summer gig. That's all I intended for it to be. Um, I was a, I played basketball here at Northern, and, and basketball, uh, for those of you that are familiar with college sports, is it's a full-time job. College sports in general is. Basketball goes both semesters, so it really, um, it, it leaves little room for any opportunity to hold a job while you are in college. So when I started Cooster Clinics, it was something to fill my, my summers, and I knew I had a passion for um, coaching, I had a passion for training, and uh, I thought, what better way than, um, I, when I came for basketball, I had to give up a sport, and that was volleyball and track track that yeah no <laughs> that's it <Phoebe. laughs> but volleyball I did I did have to um, hang up my shoes and, and put that away so that was my way of staying involved in the game and so really Cooster Clinics did start um, primarily as a volleyball program uh, and I started out by going to high schools in the area and then doing small group and private trainings I uh, just here right in Aberdeen I think that first summer I maybe went to five or seven different high schools, ran anywhere from two to four day camps for them, and uh, got, to, got to meet a ton of different athletes, uh, a lot of different coaches, have the opportunity to, to learn from them and, and just uh, begin the, uh, what was to come with Cooster Clinics. And uh, fast forward now six years later, and it has truly evolved into uh, much more than I ever would have imagined. Uh, and that is, that's thanks to having a tremendous support system that I've always had and uh, having people who aren't afraid to um, encourage me to take leaps. And what, what began as just that summer gig has now expanded into three different locations across the state of South Dakota. Um, I reside in, in Pierre, so we've got our Pierre location. And then we also have, um, we've had stuff up here in Aberdeen, and then we also are down in the Platte, South Dakota area. 
So, you know, our biggest thing with Kusler Clinics uh, uh, once when we expanded into those areas was to serve an underserved population. Um, anybody that, that is familiar with uh, the, the South Central part and specifically where Platte is, anybody that's heading West River, so the river's about 10, 12 miles from Platte, um, and anybody that is on that side of the river, the closest thing is rapid and that is not very close at all. The other closest thing would be Mitchell, which is probably a good couple hours. Um, anything beyond Platt is a good hour to Mitchell. So that's really where I, I do a family there as well, so that, that kind of made sense for us to go down to the Platt area. Uh, and, and that's really where we have taken our volleyball program, our club volleyball program, which is KKVC, and, um, and then we've expanded into the peer area with volleyball, basketball, and football. And I have uh, partnered with um, Brevin Kaiser, who was a, um, he, he graduated from Pierce, South Dakota, and then he went to University of South Dakota and uh, to, or, excuse me, Minnesota State Mankato and played football. So I don't do the football stuff, trust me. You wouldn't want me to do any of the football stuff. But we uh, co-team co um, the, basketball portion of our development and then I take the volleyball and he does the football. So that is kind of how we have evolved over the the last six years. Uh, we've just introduced football this last summer and, and truly have, um, it's, it's gone far greater than we ever could have imagined. And, and that's really, uh, as, as Dave had mentioned there, it's, it's a lot of leaps of faith and uh, some things work out. Having the can't have a fear of failure in business um, because there's a lot of things you, you never you never lose you learn and that's the same thing um, whether I'm coaching basketball or I'm in business if it uh, a loss doesn't mean anything it, it you you can learn a plenty from more times than not you can learn from more from a loss than a win anyway so um, one thing that we have, have really um, taken pride in is that our our volleyball program and our basketball program and our football programs have never been the same year after year. We're beginning to establish ourselves to to where we are consistent year after year, but we haven't gotten there yet. And I don't know if that'll be in the next year or three years or five years when we really uh, begin to to establish ourselves with with what we want to do consistently year after year, but we haven't we haven't gotten to the point yet where where we think that we're as good as we want to be, uh, and, and that's that's something that whether you be in athletics or or in business, uh, continuing to to pursue excellence and to pursue the, the best opportunities possible is has to be your goal, um, and and just having that no quit mindset regardless of if it's a if it's a loss or excuse me a learning situation or or you you really feel like you're you're winning in things um, not settling it, it is a business is one of those things that never shuts off um, I I handle the the marketing the, the emails the um, registrations the website all of that type of stuff um, is is an area as a business owner that um, until you do grow to to um, a, an area that you're able to um, outsource those things as a small business owner that's just not in our means right now so um, but I would certainly encourage you guys to to all pursue your passions and, and at the end of the day that's what it has to be uh, every single day just as David mentioned is he I, I get to do everything, or I get to coach, um, and I get to train athletes. I don't have to, uh, and, and it truly is the the greatest thing that I could ever imagine. Uh, I don't feel like I work a day in my life, um, and even even when things are maybe not going as well as I I would have liked them to, there it's far greater than anything else that I that I would ever be doing. So that's something that I would encourage you to find and discover. Is that there'll certainly be trials and tribulations, but um, if you're passionate about it. You can you can overcome any of those. So uh, that's kind of the the story of Cooster Clinics and where that's evolved to. Um, but that's plenty that you've heard from me. Let's let's listen to Cam here. <laughs> Well, as they mentioned, uh, I'm Cam Shock with Climate Control. Been in business for, believe it or not, since the turn of the century. So it feels a little old. Um, we've been in 
business for 23 years now. We've learned an awful lot of things over those years. Uh, when you're starting a business, it's really exciting, right? Um, you do something it is that you're passionate about. It, uh, you learn things while you're doing it, right? And hopefully you're enjoying the heck out of it. You're, you're having a ton of fun, and with a little bit of luck, you don't go broke while you're doing it, right? That, that's a big deal. Um, so why is it that everybody doesn't do it? You know, well, that's, that's not always how it, how it goes. Um, more typical than not, you, you start out not necessarily to get rich or to be your own boss, but you, uh, you have an awesome idea, you're passionate about it, and you say, hey, there's no reason that this can't work. Dave talked about, you know, the reasons about how he wasn't sure it would work, but then everybody said that it would, so he got that, that support to do it. And that goes a long ways. Um, so you get that support from your family, your friends, your community members, whatever it is. You go out there, you've got your guns blazing, you're like, you know what, we're going to conquer the world, we're going to do this thing, right? And you guys have done it. You know, it's just passion. It's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, have a ton of fun. You meet all kinds of people. They've talked about all the people they've met as they started business. That's probably one of the, the great things about launching a business, all the people you get to meet. You get things going. You've got business plans. Everything's new, exciting. You just can't wait for the next thing. Everything's good. Everything's fine. Uh, things are paying off. Things are going great. That's amazing. There's a few pitfalls of that. A few pitfalls of that is, is while you're having fun, sometimes you can lose focus on why it is that you're there. You're there because you want to do something that's lasting and it's enduring. And not to scare anybody, but you always got to be careful in the beginning. You got to make sure that you have a plan, right? You got to make sure you're paying attention to what's going on because it's a lot of fun in the beginning, a lot of enthusiasm. That's one thing that uh, it, it's, really, it's really easy to miss, but you don't, you want to have that fun. Um, the first seven years when I started my business, I, like I mentioned, I started in 2000. Well, the first seven years when I did that, I was still working a full-time job. I had an idea, and I wanted to have this HVAC service company, right? But I had a young family, just got married. We just moved into a house. We were just having our first, going to have our first child. And I was like, man, I'm broke. I don't have any money. How, how is it that I'm going to do this? So I looked for some things where I could try to develop the capital that I needed to start that business. And that took me seven years. So I, so I found something that was a... Uh, it was dust control for gravel roads, okay? It, it has nothing to do with what the end game was, but I found something that was, enabled me to do the capital. Sometimes people say, well, how is it that you get money to start a business? Well, there's a lot of ways you can do it. In my instance, I found some way to gain that money organically. I wanted to be able to, how is it that I acquire enough capital so that I could buy the equipment needed to go on to that next stage of the, of the company? Um, after seven years, I did that. Worked nights and weekends. Um, I can at least see one person that helped me in the middle of the night a couple times when I had equipment failures, and those aren't any fun as a small business, right? Um, you guys have all had a technical snafu for some reason, right? And you got to overcome that. Um, it's, it's difficult, and you rely on, uh, um, on a large support group for that. Uh, pretty soon, you just can't achieve all of that. You can't work a full-time job. You can't do that in 24 hours a day, and you don't have the option of having 30 hours a day, right? You got to do it. You know, you, they talk about the other, other sacrifices they made. You know, had to give up a sport. You had to do other things, and believe me, you missed all... How many events do you not get to attend to now because of business, right? If you were working someplace 8 to 5, you'd be able to attend all those things, but you're not. You're, you're making some sacrifices, but it's good because... It's your big idea, it's your baby. It's the thing it is that you're passionate about and you're willing to put forth the effort for it, right? Uh, so after seven years of doing that, I got to a point where I couldn't do it anymore and I had to decide, well, am I gonna be doing this full time or am I going to continue in, in, in my career path? Turns out that uh, I had been making some plans and it was time, time to do that. So I had a young family at home and I said, you know what, I'm gonna take all this enthusiasm, I'm gonna, quit my full-time job, my guaranteed paycheck, my security blanket, and I'm going to become self-employed. And in the beginning, it was self-employed. I mean, you were just by yourself, just like, like they've experienced. Uh, and then some of that enthusiasm converts into just utter fear. <laughs> and fear's a powerful motivator. Really powerful. Not as much fun as enthusiasm, but it's ever, ever, ever as much powerful. Uh, we went ahead and did that. And by the end of the first year, we were able to rent a shop space. I was able to take the capital that I'd saved, 
and, uh, and bought all the sheet metal equipment we had in order to move into the next phase of the company. The, the goal of the company was to be an HVAC service provider. It's not as much fun as playing sports or commentating on it, but you know, for the technical geeks out there, it, it is very interesting. You know, the fact that you have a, a punch to knock out both sides, that gets me all excited. That's, <laughs> uh, that's, uh, uh, so amazing ideas are out there. You get passion around. So he, so he rented this shop space for a couple years, Things went well, we started growing our team and said, you know what, we're gonna have to have a bigger spot, we're gonna have to find some permanent space. I was fortunate to be able to rent a small section out of the facility that we're at now. We were out on the east side of town, about 2,400 square feet. We ended up renting 2,400 square feet out of the center of a building at our current location. And uh, over the course of probably, I think it was maybe four years, we ended up um, buying the building and taking all of the 20,000 square feet of that building. Um, yeah, it's amazing. Went from one tiny little office in, in the back room and, and having one bathroom to being able to renovate the entire office section and grow. It, it is amazing when you can foster that passion that you have and, and turn it into something. Uh, again, I'm, I'm skipping ahead here. Um, one of the things that, as we went through with all this, as we talk about the importance of a plan. So you're going to take this big idea that you have, and some of you have, have implemented and gone forward. But it's important to have that plan, because as I mentioned, when I started, I started a company, I knew what I wanted to do, and I managed to start leverage things in my life to make it feasible to do that. Pretty soon, I found a spot that I could rent, rent a location. I found another business, something similar to build the capital. Then pretty soon we rented a spot. You continue to have a plan, and if something comes up, you need to have a plan B or a plan C. You know, things just don't go according to plan. You always have to have a couple backups. The greatest thing that will create fear in business is you don't know what's going to happen. It's fear of the unknown, right? So anytime that you can prevent having that unknown, when a situation comes up, planning's everything. When you have that planning, if this happens, okay, I know I'm going to do this, and that takes a lot of the fear away. And it allows you to keep your motivation to be all enthusiasm rather than the fear. And I'm telling you, that fear is a bad thing. You want to avoid that. Um, one of the things that I talk, that I have experienced because I've been in business a, a little while, um, the thing that you will find as you go forward is there's a lot of people in business. There's a lot of kindred spirits out there with you. And you're not in it by yourself. Make sure that you tap the resources. You know, there are so many resources just in this room, and people are willing to help out. So as you go forward and you take these ideas and you do something, don't feel like it is that, that you're going to be on your own because you're not on your own. There are a ton of people that are experiencing the same thing that you do, and they've learned from it. So you don't have to make every mistake on your own. You can learn from other people's mistakes. So make sure you spend time in fostering that um, a communication with, with not even necessarily competitors, but there'd be things like we talked about, very different businesses here, but we all would have something to learn from each other. Don't be so, don't head down the path that only do the things that you th feel are similar because there's everything, business is a universal language. It, it, it equates to no matter what it is you do. And, and they all have the similar problems. You want to be with people that have experienced those problems, and that will give you the energy to go forward with your ideas and turn them into successful businesses. Um, you know, sometimes we talk about, well, why, why would I want to start my own business? Why would I not work for a company? Well, there's a few things, and it's different for everybody, right? But one of the things that when you start your own business and you take your big idea and turn it into something, the amount of personal gratification that you get from having that success is amazing. I mean, that's what will drive you to go forward over and over again. And the failures, you know, they happen. Don't be discouraged by it because, as you said, that's where you learn. You learn more from the failures or the losses, as you say, as you do the wins. Because you know what not to do again, and hopefully you don't do it again. You know, that, I, mean, I mean, that is the goal of, of loss. You know, I say it all the time, that education is really expensive. And it doesn't matter whether you pay for it in a class or whether you learn it in the school of hard knocks, but education always costs something. It always costs your time, costs something. So don't not learn from those mistakes that you made. That is the education that, um, it's just invaluable. The mistakes are, are, are worth a lot. Um, probably just in closing, um, 
I just wanted to say that, you know, no matter how good your idea it is, it can only be successful if you have a good, solid plan. And that plan includes, as I mentioned very quickly um, early on, is knowing what your financial data is. Make sure that you keep track of that. Enthusiasm can take you right across that plateau and you think that you're just screaming and you think it's going all good, but if you aren't paying attention, you can get into trouble fast. So pay attention to that. Um, leverage the resources that you have. Kelly is amazing. Um, I don't know how many times I've been in work with her and, and everybody in, in, in the entire state, there are so many mentors out there and you guys all worked with mentors. There's a ton of people that are willing to do that. And just because they aren't known as a mentor, that doesn't mean that they aren't willing. So if you find somebody that you see, you think you can learn something from, make sure that you talk to them. And you know what, there's no greater flattery than if somebody asks you how to do something, right? That, that huge satisfaction from that. So as you go forward, Take that big idea, turn it into a business, and have some success. Let's give our panel a big round of applause. All right, we are now gonna open the floor to questions. There's two microphones here at the end of the aisle, please. If, the, uh, if you are hit with a good question, please, please come engage with our panel. I will kick us off and ask the first, and then I'll turn it over to all of you. Um, but I'm gonna go kind of spin off something Cam just said. Um, Who's been a mentor, an inspiration, or an influence to you, whether it be personally or in your career, and why? Oh, wow, there's been a ton of them over the time. Um, you know, I think some of the best mentors that I've had have actually come almost later on in business as you become a little more established, and I have been able to take time to talk with some other people in the industry and out of the industry. Once you start removing yourself, um, is really just other business people. Um, I don't know that I could really put my name on one particular one because there have been so many of them. And a couple of the best ones, as I mentioned, are people that I didn't really expect to be a mentor, but they did something that I thought was that I could learn from. And I, I asked them about it, and they were very, very free with their knowledge. So I, I think it really can be anybody. Yes, um, I think mine would start with my coaches from both high school and college. Uh, I think there, there's something to be said about people who see something in you that maybe you didn't see in yourself. Um, and I would say that, that my coach, Coach Seiler um, at, at Abrain Central, she's now the athletic director there. Um, and then my first couple of years here, Kurt Fredrickson, um, who is one of, the, one of the greatest coaches to ever go through women's basketball, um, is uh, those two are huge mentors, um, whether, they, whether they even know it or not. Um, and it is a good reminder, too, uh, to, to go and thank those mentors um, because the, sometimes the impact that they have might not be an immediate um, revelation, but it comes, like Cam said, later on in, in your career. Uh, but they really did uh, foster that. The, my passion of, of coaching and then created, a, I, I ultimately then created the opportunity to um, create, have a business that, that I got to do my um, passion of coaching. And so I, I think it first and foremost was instilled by, by my coaches. And, and then of course having, like I had mentioned earlier, my, my support system and, and that starts with my family. Um, both of my parents are, are inspirations uh, and have always supported uh, whether my ideas were crazy or um, made zero sense whatsoever or they they made a, total, a lot of sense so um, they've always give, uh, given me a hundred percent support and I, that's something that um, and but also on the flip side not afraid to, to share their thoughts and, and opinions on things as well which I, I value that feedback too uh, for me um, my dad was a business owner so when I was growing up I got a chance to see uh, that whole uh, model taking place and uh, my parents instilled a lot of confidence in me and then when I was your guys' age I started working at the American News. I was a, I was a junior in high school and, uh, and I learned a lot from the people that in my department in other departments of the paper and uh, they, I'm sure to this day they did not realize that I was watching them intently and they don't probably even realize that they were mentors to me but I watched them and how they went about doing their business and how they did it right. And when it was five o'clock, they didn't just pack up and head out the door. I mean, they stayed and then the, did the job the way it was supposed to be done until it was done. Whether that was 5.15, whether that was 5.30, 6 o'clock, it doesn't matter. 
Uh, and so their work ethic and their tireless uh, passion for what they did really rubbed off on me uh, to this day. Uh, and then, of course, as Brianna mentioned, a couple of teachers, to, to this day, Whenever I see a former teacher of mine, whether it's in a grocery store, out in public, whatever, I stop and thank them for investing into my life because I would not be, I would not be up here, let's put it that way, if it wouldn't be for the past instructors that I've had. Specifically, a lot of my English teachers. And, you know, you don't realize what's happening at the time, but, you know, God's got a plan for your life, right? And so I'm sitting in, in junior high, we called it back then, that's how old I am nowadays, it's middle school. But it's junior high, and you know, we, there was always two sections of English. And you couldn't pick and choose your teacher, you just, at that time, you ended up in the class that you ended up. And so I had some of my buddies, I mean, they had the slack English teacher, okay? They were doing free reading and things like that. I had the drill sergeants. I was doing vocabulary development and wordly wise and all this other stuff. And I'm thinking, well, how fair is this? And now looking back at it, I'm thinking, wow, how cool was that? Because that really started the whole process of my writing and got to the point where I had the, the, the skills that I needed that equipped me to have the career that I did. So, you know, if it seems hard at the time, that's okay because sometimes pain equals growth and it's really beneficial for you in the long run. Again, ladies and gentlemen, these microphones are on. Oh, a question from the audience. Good afternoon. Nathan Sanderson with South Dakota Retailers. Good to see some of you guys again. Uh, I know uh, Cam specifically does a lot of marketing online, but I wonder if you could talk with these guys just a little bit about how you grow your business through marketing. Maybe one or two ideas for them on having a great idea, but it's only a good idea if somebody's going to actually pay you for that idea. Don't all jump at once. Do the wolves on this one? Um, so, so marketing for us is, again, I, I like the technical aspects of things. So marketing feels like a foreign language, and it's not something that um, I think we've done okay on, but it's not something that I get really excited about. But I shouldn't say that. I get excited about it. So marketing, I think some of the best marketing that we have done has all been organic meaning that we, we want to be top of mind and we want to be there. But in our industry especially, it's not um, necessarily a subscription or people don't come searching for our, for our um, services all, until they're in a time of need. So most of our marketing is done top of mind. We want to make sure that we are a household name so that when the need arises, we, we're the one that come to mind. Um, we we want to make sure that we have a brand consistency, all of our marketing, and everybody will tell you this, but make sure that you do it consistent. Make sure your message always looks the same. Um, geez, I'm in front of all these marketing experts out here, and I'm talking <laughs> about it. But, but um, it's, it's really top of mind awareness for anything that you are trying to sell to, to a broader audience. If you're doing a specific service, especially, um, I think, both of your businesses would be more so that way. It's the power of the referral, man. If you do a good job, they're going to tell everybody about it. And that is the easiest way to market when you're starting. You know, you talk about um, athletic, large corporations and what they do for marketing, but that's a totally different realm from what it is. In the beginning, when you want to start your idea, you want to either have referrals or you want to be top of mind. But, man, if you do a good job, people will talk about it for you. Uh, for us, I think a lot of it um, has to do with our social media presence, and um, we primarily focus on Facebook and Instagram. I, when we first started, it was it was a Facebook page, and I think I used a Google site uh, for our website, uh, and that's how uh, I, I really did not envision it to become more than more than in what it had began as. But uh, right away when we started, I I was a firm believer that we did not need Instagram, and then boy am I wrong uh, because we our target audience are primarily 7th through 12th graders and as I'm sure all of you guys all have an Instagram um, and and whether anybody wants to admit it or not they they like to be um, broadcasted on social media and, and shown off and all of their um, every everything that they're doing well and participating in and so our social media marketing is is our primary uh, marketing 
chain, and then we, we also use some email marketing. But at the end of the day, we, we all, I mean, our t-shirts, we call our, them our walking billboards. Uh, we, we give out t-shirts for everything. And then it's just uh, spreading by word of mouth. We're still uh, becoming established in the places that we are. And, and every year we continue to get uh, emails of, well, I just heard about you. And, and that's a good reminder for, for us as, as business owners to um, really revisit our, our marketing scheme and, and where, where we need to continue to grow in. But primarily social media, word of mouth, um, and then walking advertisements. Yeah, I think uh, word of mouth is the best advertisement that you can get. Our business is a little tricky because it's all online. So we also do a lot of the social media stuff, Twitter, uh, Facebook, uh, every day. Uh, I will take our lead story and I'll tease it on Twitter and Facebook saying, you know, hey, if you like this, visit the site. This is what we're all about. So every day, people, and you only get a couple free clicks and then, then you have to subscribe. So we kind of tease it that way a little bit, uh, which is fine for people that are on social media. But how do you get the other people who are not on social media? And that's really the real trick. We've tried doing some advertising in print, uh, print media, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, I, I, when I'm out and about, uh, you know, people will talk to me. Uh, hey, how are things going at the paper? Um, gee, I haven't been there for like five years. I mean, I guess I really made a big impact. You don't even know I have left yet, you know. So, but it gives me an opportunity to let them know that hey, we're still we're still supplying that same content, only in it's, an, it's a different venue now. And that's really a trick, because you know we. There are some really, really loyal, and I'm not here to bash the paper because I was a part of the paper for a long time. So I'm, I'm sick to see what's happening here nationally, not just in Aberdeen. But you have these die in the wool, hardcore, I got to have my paper, I need something in my hand kind of people. And to try to get them to come over to the other side now, which is all you know, on the computer, is a really, really tough deal. Um, and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to these people. And they'll go, yeah, you know, I can't get anything in the paper, you know, it's on four days old, blah, 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 blah. And I'll let them go for about two minutes, and I say, uh, you know, I know where you can find that stuff. And they'll go, yeah, but it's on the computer. I said, look, it's not that hard, okay? You get your son or daughter, you bookmark the page, the computer's, you know, the website's easy to use. And slowly but surely, one by one, they're starting to come over. I equate it to a person who's in a restaurant, and he's sitting in a booth, and I've sat in this booth for 30 years. I'm not moving, this is my booth. This is where I sit. Yeah, okay, but the food's over here now. No, 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 I, this is my booth, I'm not moving. Food's over here. Pretty soon, guess what? They start getting a little hungry. Food's not coming to their table anymore. Pretty soon, they're going over where the food's at, okay? They want the content. And so, to me, I get really good satisfaction when I see somebody in their 60s or 70s, 80s. I've got a 90-year-old subscriber that's on the site every single day. That's how, his son told me his day starts by checking the weather, hitting the website, going and getting the paper, okay? That makes me feel pretty good. So when we can get those old school people to come over, but again, marketing, how do you get them, okay? I just had a, a person that wants to get a gift subscription for somebody, but they, don't, they aren't on Facebook. I said, it doesn't matter, they don't have to be on Facebook. They have access to the internet, you're in, okay? So again, it's educating people. When I go out to businesses and ask them, you know, if they want to be a part of the site, a big share, share of that is just disseminating information. It's not that I necessarily expect that they're going to become a sponsor, but now I'm educating them so that they know we're out there, okay? So some of them don't even know that. Some do. We're getting to the point now where more and more do. But again, it's all about educating people, letting them know where it's at, and then once they're on and they like it, they tell their friends, boom, then word of mouth advertising. Excellent. Well, I'll ask another one. Um, this question was actually submitted ahead of time by, by one of our students, um, and, and I kind of put two together. I want the two sides of the coin, please. What is the most difficult portion of being a business owner and what is the best part of being a business owner? I can, I can go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the, in, in our business you, you're working with a lot of um, families and at times uh, I think the worst part of, of 
being a business owner is dealing with parents, um, and that's with coaching as well. Um, and you know, it's it's the worst, but also the best. Um, and and I don't want that to. There's usually only one or two that you kind of sit there, and you might have to put them in their place a little bit. Um, but I would, and if that's the worst thing that that I have to deal with, it's. it's Pretty fine, um, but I, on the flip side, you know the best the best thing that I get to do is is building the relationships that I do with the athletes that I come across and uh, seeing them grow. Our our business mantra is building better athletes, building better people, and ultimately our goal is to um, for them when they are done with sports because at, at some or someday it, that is uh, the reality for all of us. And have you? been given the the tools to go out and make this world a better place and then that's ultimately what we are what we're trying to do is is using athletics um, specifically volleyball basketball and football to to build better people um, and and help them in their journey as as athletes but I think ultimately the, the best part of my job is is getting to work with the athletes and building the relationships that that long term um, I guess still get to keep and when they when they graduate and they they go on and they don't need our services anymore. Uh, they still come back and they want to be involved in various ways, um, and they continue to grow and and maybe sparks. I, I have a couple of kids that, when we first started, they are now getting into coaching, and and that is one of the coolest things for things to come full circle, is to see them become um, or them be passionate about something that that you are as well, but also just becoming themselves and 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 really awesome people. Well, my answer is probably going to be a lot shorter because I've only been at this for about a year and a half. But I think one of the most challenging things for me is I, I, I'm kind of, what are the, what's the old saying, chief cook and bottle washer? I mean, I'm, I'm the content person. I'm the marketing person. I'm the tax person. I'm all of that stuff. And again, I, <laughs> there's times I don't consider myself a business owner. You know, I'm a sports person who owns a business. And so, you know, one of my least favorite times is the monthly tax thing where I got to sit down and figure all this stuff out and then hope that I can stay on the outside and not have to go into jail and my wife have to bake a cake with a file in it or something, you know? <laughs> so I'm like, uh, my, thank goodness my daughter's got some background in this and, and I've used her more than once going, so where do I report this? What line does that go on, you know? So, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a challenge, especially if, if you're by yourself. Um, so, I, I, you know, but that's part of being owning your own company, right? I mean, the nice part about owning in your own company is, oh, okay, well, I make out the schedule and, uh, you know, this is what we're going to do this week or whatever, and I don't have to feel like somebody's looking over my shoulder all the time and what have you, you know? I mean, you're kind of your own boss. But for me, personally, and I, again, I want to make a living, okay? But I did not get into this to make money. I got into this to make a difference. And when I see the looks on the, on the faces of the people that I interview, especially the student athletes, and I see what difference it makes in their lives and the people that love them, the, the people that are so they're supporting them, that to me is the greatest satisfaction. That, that's more than any money. When I see a student athlete and say, you, you, you want to talk to me? I actually had this happen before at a cross country meet this past fall. Went up to a girl and she goes, me? I, I, I've never done this before. I said, relax. This is not like going to the dentist, okay? I'm not going to make you sound stupid. This will be very conversational. We had the interview, and I guarantee you, uh, this happens so many times. I get done interviewing somebody, I turn around, and there's this explosion behind me. People, their, their teammates, you're a celebrity, you got interviewed. Everybody's going off, high fives, and the parents are videotaping and everything. And I walk away just with a smile going, man, this, this is worth it. This is why I got into this right here. It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with you. So that's, that's the really satisfying part for me. Yeah, that's it's kind of an easy question. What's, what's the best part of it? Well, you guys all have an idea or solution to make somebody's life better, right? You're passionate about it. So the best thing about it is, is when you can take what you believe to be better and you actually succeed at it. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's, providing coaching, whether it's providing um, athletic content and, and be, people will be able to see it, or if it's us trying to find somebody's, solve somebody's problem that they're having at that time. When you can do what your big idea is, what it is that you think that you want to do better, when you succeed at that, the great thing is that you know that you had a lot of direct impact in it and that the fruit of your labor was successful. 
I mean, it just, it's the satisfaction of being able to do that job that you want to do and you actually su succeed at doing it better. The worst part is all the stuff that doesn't ever get you there. And like you said, it's the taxes, it's the, uh, it's the onboarding of additional staff, it's all the things that you can't, that, that don't put you directly in front of that. That's always the worst part. The other worst part, like you say, the, uh, the parents, you know, it, and it is, it's, it's dealing with the, the people that you have to deal with and when there's conflict there. Dealing with conflict is always a difficult situation, but it is, it is in life. But that's really minor and compared to every day when you get to do what you want to do and you get to succeed at whatever that idea is that you wanted to do better than anybody else. Please help me thank these three fine entrepreneurs for their insight. That's good. That's good.